Before he was the game, Triple H was a kid from the small city of Nashua, New Hampshire called Paul Levesque. He became hooked on wrestling at an early age and took up bodybuilding at 14 years old so he could look like the wrestlers he saw on TV. During that time, the game was working at a gym and met Ted Arcidi, a world champion powerlifter who also briefly wrestled in WWE in the mid 80s. Our CD knew the legendary Killer Kowalski, one of the most feared and respected wrestlers of the 50s and 60s. Eventually, Ted Arcidi agreed to introduce Triple H to Kowalski, who began training the future WWE star in early 1990. During this time, the King of Kings also trained with future WWE stars Perry Saturn and China. Triple H had his first wrestling match in 1992 at a show Killer Kowalski was running. Kowalski wanted his student to be called the Terrorizer, but Triple H didn't like it. They ultimately settled on the name Terror Rising. Triple H was impressive from the start, and not long after his first match, the game would be signed by WCW. He continued to call himself Terror Rising, but it wasn't quite working. The King of Kings decided to change and became Jean-Paul Levesque, a snobby upper-class Frenchman. While it didn't make him famous, the character change did give Triple H more screen time. Later on, Triple H was paired with Lord Steven Regal, a wrestler who'd become a lifelong friend. While it seemed like a good pairing, the game wasn't happy with his role in the company. He met with Vince McMahon, and after seeing Triple H's match in the 1994 Starcade pay-per-view, McMahon offered the Cerebral Assassin a WWE contract. In a rare move, Triple H essentially kept his WCW character intact when he joined WWE. While he was no longer French, he continued playing an aristocratic character who was from Greenwich, Connecticut. Triple H would also change his name to Hunter Hearst Helmsley. After weeks of promo videos, the game competed in his first WWE match on April 30th, 1995. Triple H's first opponent was a wrestler named Buck Zumhoff, who would later be sentenced to 25 years in prison for criminal sexual misconduct. Yikes. As the game walked to the ring, he held a cane and had a disdainful look on his face. The commentator said that Triple H was here to bring civility and class to the WWE. Once the match started, the King of Kings gave Zumhoff a waistlock takedown. Zumhoff quickly got out of it and taunted the newcomer. When the two locked up again, they exchanged wrist locks until Triple H landed a closed fist right hand, knocking down the veteran. With his opponent on the mat, the Cerebral Assassin stomped away at Buck Zumhoff and then picked him back up and connected with a European uppercut. Soon after that, Triple H surprisingly broke out a spinning heel kick. The game felt kind of cocky, which gave Zumhoff an opportunity to make a comeback. Buck was going to try and hit a hip toss, but Triple H struck with an RKO from out of nowhere. The referee counted three and Triple H had won his debut match. From start to finish, the fight was about two minutes long. We didn't get to see much of Triple H's moveset, but it is crazy to see him hit a spinning heel kick and a cutter. The match did, however, introduce fans to the Hunter Hearst Helmsley character, and over the next few shows, we'd get more acquainted with them. After his first match, Triple H continued defeating enhancement talent. Finally, in October 1985, the game had his first rivalry with a farmer character called Henry O'Godwin. It started when the two fought to a draw on Raw, the first time Triple H didn't win a one-on-one -on -one match in WWE. This led to a rematch at the In Your House 5 pay-per-view, where the game and Godwin fought in an Arkansas hog pen match. Triple H picked up the victory by back body dropping Henry O'Godwin into a hog pen filled with actual pigs. The thrill of the victory is short-lived though, as the special guest referee, Hillbilly Jim, threw the King of Kings into the pig pen too, where he was covered in manure. After feuding with a farmer, Triple H would have a rivalry with a garbage man named Duke the Dumpster Drozzy. They fought at the 1996 Royal Rumble, where the game knocked out Drozzy with brass knucks, only to have the decision reversed by WWE President Gorilla Monsoon. While Triple H got his revenge against the Dumpster by defeating him at In Your House 6, things were about to get a lot worse for the King of Kings. The Ultimate Warrior had recently returned to WWE, and the company was eager to feature him at that year's WrestleMania. Originally, the match between the Warrior and Triple H was supposed to be competitive, but Warrior had other ideas. Since he was a legend, the Ultimate Warrior decided he wanted to defeat Triple H in less than two minutes at WrestleMania. Not only that, but Warrior also decided not to sell Triple H's finisher, the Pedigree. The game was still a newbie and had to go along with it, and ended up losing in spectacular fashion in his first WrestleMania match. Even with the setback, WWE still had big plans for Triple H. He was rumored to win that year's King of the Ring tournament, but in May of 1996, his career took a surprising setback. Triple H was real-life friends with Shawn Michaels, Kevin Nash, and Scott Hall. Hall and Nash decided to leave WWE and go to WCW, and in their final night in WWE, the entire group broke character and hugged in the ring. People backstage were livid, but since Kevin Nash and Scott Hall were gone, and since Shawn Michaels was WWE's biggest star, only Triple H could be punished. In the King of the Ring tournament, Hunter ended up losing to Jake the Snake, but it didn't end there. 
The game's career continued to stall, as he was left without any major storylines. Finally, WWE management felt that Triple H had served his punishment and briefly paired him with Mr. Perfect. Together, they schemed their way into the game capturing his first WWE title against Mark Marrow on Raw, the Intercontinental Championship. However, in a sign of things to come, Triple H lost the title to a young Rock on Raw in early 1997. Even with the loss, fans continued to look up for the Cerebral Assassin. On the following episode of Raw, one of the most pivotal moments of his career would happen. While wrestling a match against Goldust, Triple H's real-life girlfriend, China, emerged from the crowd and manhandled Goldust manager, Marlena. This led to China becoming Triple H's bodyguard, and not only that, but the Camp Kings would also defeat the Bizarre One at WrestleMania 13. The momentum continued, as Triple H finally got his King of the Ring victory after picking up wins in the tournament against Crush, Ahmed Johnson, and another soon-to-be major rival, Mankind. The game's career rose to another level that year, as he dropped his aristocratic character and embraced the role of a degenerate. This is pretty ironic, since this is exactly what he didn't want to see in the WWE when he debuted in 1995. Sadly, nowadays, there's a lot WWE doesn't want you to see, like the original WWE Network if you live in the US or India. However, there is a solution. This video's sponsor, Atlas VPN. I think we'll all agree that the WWE Network was a much better way to watch WWE content than Peacock or Sony LIV. The good news is that by downloading Atlas VPN, you can get the WWE Network back. I did it by connecting to a VPN in Sweden and signing up for a WWE Network account. Now I'm back on the original WWE Network. That's awesome, but why should you use Atlas VPN over other VPN services? First, Atlas has blazing fast speeds so it doesn't slow down your internet. Additionally, one Atlas subscription covers an unlimited number of devices. Not only that, but in addition to being a VPN, Atlas also stops ads, blocks malicious links, and notifies you when someone is trying to steal your data. Plus, while shopping online, Atlas will give you the best deals on things like subscriptions, hotels, airlines, and more. Now if all that wasn't enough, Atlas offers the best VPN deal. Right now, they have a massive discount. Get a 3 year subscription for just $1.99 a month. Atlas also offers a 30 day money back guarantee, so if it ends up not being what you want, you'll be refunded. This huge discount is only around for a short while, so use my link in the description and give Atlas VPN a try. Anyways, Triple H and Shawn Michaels, along with China, Rick Rude, and later on, Billy Gunn and the Road Dog, aligned to create D-Generation X. During this time, the name Hunter Hearst Helmsley went away, and he'd be officially known as Triple H. As a member of DX, the group set their sights on the Hart Foundation. Bret Hart had been critical of Triple H and HBK's over-the-top language and sexual references. The battle culminated in the infamous Montreal Screwjob at the 1997 Survivor Series. Hart ended up losing the WWE Championship to Shawn Michaels, despite the fact he never tapped out. Bret left WWE after that match, but even with him out of the company, Triple H wasn't done with the Hart Foundation just yet. A couple of weeks later on Raw, DX had a little person betray Hart. Later that same night, Triple H beat up former Hart Foundation member Jim Neidhart after DX briefly formed an alliance with them. This embarrassment and betrayal of Neidhart led to WWE Commissioner Sergeant Slaughter getting involved. This set up a match between Triple H and Slaughter at the D-Generation X in your house pay-per-view that the game won. After that, Triple H began feuding with Owen Hart over the European Championship, leading to a match at WrestleMania 14. Per the stipulation, China was handcuffed to Sergeant Slaughter, but that proved pretty ineffective as she was still able to interfere and help give the King of Kings the victory. Triple H and Hart faced off once again at Unforgiven in your house, where the game successfully retained his championship. Triple H and Owen Hart's rivalry wasn't over, as Hart joined up with the Nation of Domination. This resulted in a battle between DX and the Nation, and Hart was finally able to defeat Triple H in a 3 on 3 tag team match. Not only that, but around the same time, Triple H would lose the European Championship to another member of the Nation of Domination, D'Lo Brown. After feuds with Owen Hart and Brown, the next person Triple H had feud with was the leader of the Nation, The Rock. At the fully loaded pay-per-view, the two battled to a time limit draw in a best 2 out of 3 falls match for the IC Championship. At the next pay-per-view, SummerSlam, Triple H and The Rock delivered an awesome ladder match. The fight saw Triple H become a two-time Intercontinental Champion after China gave Rock a low blow while he was climbing the ladder. Unfortunately, Triple H suffered a knee injury shortly after that and had to vacate the title. After returning to the ring, the game received a big moment at the 1999 Royal Rumble. In the final moments of the match, it looked like Triple H had won, only to be thrown out by Vince McMahon, who was then thrown out by China. 
Things got even worse for the Camp Canes when China betrayed them the following day to join the corporation. The real-life couple faced off an opposing sides at St. Valentine's Day Massacre, with the cerebral assassin teaming up with fellow DX member X-Pac and Kane joining China's side. Even though Triple H's team took a loss, he was soon reunited with the ninth wonder of the world at WrestleMania 15. China turned on Kane by hitting him with a chair, allowing Triple H to hit the pedigree. The power couple was back together, and later that night, Triple H betrayed X-Pac by helping Shane McMahon defeat him. At the 1999 backlash, the cerebral assassin defeated X-Pac and set his sights on The Rock once again. Triple H threw the Great One off the Raw stage, breaking Rock's arm in the process. The two competed in several one-on-one -on -one matches over the next few months. At the 1999 fully loaded pay-per-view, Triple H defeated the Brahma Bowl in a strap match, making the game the number one contender for the WWE Championship. This ultimately led to a triple threat match at SummerSlam between Triple H, Mankind, and the WWE Champion, Stone Cold Steve Austin. The match ended with Mankind paying Steve Austin to become the new champion. However, the next night, Triple H challenged Mankind for the title and won. It was one of the biggest moments of Triple H's career, but his first reign as WWE Champion was kind of weird. Less than a month after winning the title, he lost it to Vince McMahon, only to then win it back in a six-pack challenge at Unforgiven. Triple H got a huge win when he beat Steve Austin to retain the WWE Championship, even if it was because The Rock accidentally hit Stone Cold with a sledgehammer. After that, Triple H would face the Brahma Bull as well as the Big Show in a triple threat match at Survivor Series. In a shocking twist, Big Show won the match and Triple H was once again without any gold. This wasn't a downgrade though, as the game took part in one of the biggest storylines of the Attitude Era. For months, Test and Stephanie McMahon had been an on-air couple. The two were set to get married on an episode of Raw, but right before the couple could say their I do's, they were interrupted by Triple H. The game dropped a shocking revelation that he was actually married to Stephanie McMahon. The King of Kings admitted to paying a bartender to spike Stephanie's drink, where he then kidnapped her, drove her to a Las Vegas chapel, and mimicked her voice to say, I do. However, it was eventually revealed that Stephanie was in on it the whole time. This came to light when she helped her husband defeat Vince McMahon at the Armageddon pay-per-view. This was also the start of the McMahon-Helmsley era. At the start of 2000, Triple H would become a major star. He defeated Big Show to win back the WWE Championship and then defeated Cactus Jack at the Royal Rumble. At WrestleMania, Triple H defended his title in a four-way elimination match and won, making him the first heel or villain to win the main event of WrestleMania. While The Rock would take the title at Backlash, the Cerebral Assassin won it back at Judgment Day 2000 in a 60-minute Iron Man match. Once again, Triple H's fourth championship reign was brief, just lasting over a month. The Rock once again won the gold after pinning Vince McMahon in a six-man tag team match at the King of the Ring. After this, Triple H would stay out of the title scene for a while. In the meantime, the game had an entertaining rivalry with Chris Jericho that saw the King of Kings defeat Y2J in a last man standing match at the fully loaded pay-per-view. After that, Triple H would feud with Kurt Angle, which evolved into a love triangle with Stephanie McMahon. Ultimately, Steph stood by her husband and helped Triple H defeat Kurt Angle at Unforgiven. Meanwhile, Stone Cold Steve Austin had returned to action after being hit by a car. Infamously, it was Rikishi who drove the car, but it was later revealed that Triple H had paid him to do it. Austin wasn't going to let this slide, and the Texas Rattlesnake lifted Triple H's car with a forklift and dropped it with the game inside. Triple H somehow survived and returned a few weeks later. To settle the score, they battled in a three stages of hell match at No Way Out, with Triple H winning 2-1. After settling things with Stone Cold, Triple H battled The Undertaker at WrestleMania 17. Taker beat Triple H, but this was just the beginning of their rivalry. At the same event, Stone Cold joined up with Vince McMahon. This caused him and Triple H to become tag team partners on the Raw after WrestleMania. Known as the two-man power trip, the duo set out to hold every championship. Triple H picked up the Intercontinental title, and he and Steve Austin soon also won the tag team championship. However, while the two-man power trip was defending their titles, Triple H would injure his leg. This was a serious injury, and Triple H would not be seen for the rest of the year. After eight months of recovering, the game was ready to make a comeback. He returned on the first Raw of 2002, and then won the Royal Rumble match. Everything was going great, but his on-screen marriage with Stephanie was falling apart. She faked a pregnancy, and when Triple H found out, he dumped his wife during their wedding vows. This caused Stephanie to align with Triple H's WrestleMania opponent, the undisputed WWE Champion, Chris Jericho. At the event, Triple H got a sweet revenge and won his fifth WWE Championship. 
Unfortunately, like his other title reigns, it was short-lived. At the next pay-per-view, Backlash, Triple H lost the title to Hulk Hogan, who had recently returned. Around the same time, another major star made his return as well, Shawn Michaels. Triple H and HBK tease a DX reunion, only for Triple H to brutally attack Michaels. The former DX teammates faced off at SummerSlam in an unsanctioned street fight. While Shawn Michaels picked up the victory, he was left lying after the King of Kings attacked him with a sledgehammer. Around this time, Raw and SmackDown were split into two separate brands with their own rosters and champions. The WWE title went to SmackDown, which left Raw without a world champion. In a controversial move, Eric Bischoff just handed the World Heavyweight Championship to Triple H. The game's first challenger for the gold was Rob Van Dam, who couldn't beat the game at Unforgiven. What happened next continues to live on in wrestling infamy. Intercontinental Champion Kane and Triple H kicked off a feud revolving around the death of Kane's girlfriend, Katie Vick. The game blamed Katie Vick's death on Kane and did some other things too. Mercifully, the storyline ended with Triple H winning at No Mercy, unifying the World Heavyweight and Intercontinental Championships. Triple H's reign of terror hit a slight bump when he lost the world title to Shawn Michaels in the first Elimination Chamber match. HBK's tail run was short-lived though, as the Cerebral Assassin regained the gold at Armageddon a month later. To continue his reign over Raw, Triple H enlisted some help to form the most dominant stable of the era, Evolution, featuring the legend Ric Flair, star in the making Randy Orton, and the muscle Batista. A series of challengers emerged with the King of Kings battling Booker T at WrestleMania 19. The angle was controversial as it seemed to incorporate racism into the storyline. It didn't help either that Triple H defeated Booker T and retained his championship. Tripp's next challenger was Goldberg, who debuted the night after WrestleMania. Goldberg appeared to be Triple H's kryptonite as he ended the game's world title reign at Unforgiven. I say appeared because Triple H won the title back at Armageddon. Soon after, Chris Benoit won the Royal Rumble and chose to challenge Triple H for the World Heavyweight Championship. The match ended up becoming a triple threat when Shawn Michaels was added in. All three men put on a very memorable match at WrestleMania 20 that saw Benoit force Triple H to tap out. The King of Kings tried to regain his title and employed the help of Eugene. Eugene ended up accidentally getting in the way, which angered Triple H. This set up a match at SummerSlam where the game defeated Eugene. At the same event, Randy Orton won the World Heavyweight Championship. This caused Triple H to betray Orton the next night. To add insult to injury, the game also beat Randy just a few weeks later for the title. Triple H would feud the likes of Shawn Michaels and Edge, but his next major opponent was ironically his own teammate, Batista. The Animal won the 2005 Royal Rumble and was deciding who he would fight. Batista overheard Ric Flair and Triple H scheming against him, causing the Animal to choose the game as his WrestleMania opponent. Not only would Triple H lose his World Heavyweight Championship to Batista, but he also lost their two rematches as well. After that, Triple H disappeared for a few months to heal from a neck injury. When he returned, the game reunited with Ric Flair. However, Triple H made his true intentions clear when he attacked the Nature Boy. The former Evolution teammates squared off in a last man standing match at Survivor Series, which Triple H won. Riding that momentum, the Cerebral Assassin won a tournament that meant he would challenge the WWE Champion, John Cena, at WrestleMania. However, for a third year in a row, Triple H failed to win on the grandest stage of them all. After being a serious bad guy, Triple H decided to change things up. He reunited with Shawn Michaels and brought back DX. They feuded with Vince and Shane McMahon, as well as the Spirit Squad, which was filled with D-Generation X's trademark humor. H and Michaels would need to get serious though when they crossed paths with Randy Orton and Edge. They had some good matches, but unfortunately, the rivalry came to an abrupt stop when Triple H tore his quad again during a match. Like in 2001, this kept the game on the sideline for several months. He made his return at the 2007 SummerSlam, where he defeated his former rival, Booker T. Then, two months after that, Triple H would be given a WWE Championship match against Randy Orton at the start of the No Mercy pay-per-view. The game won, but he had to defend the title against Umaga later that night. Triple H won that match as well, but had to face off against Randy Orton in the main event. This was the breaking point, and Triple H lost the title back to Orton. However, Triple H finally got another shot after winning an Elimination Chamber match at the 2008 No Way Out pay-per-view. This put him in a WWE Championship match involving John Cena and Randy Orton. Once again, the Cerebral Assassin failed to win the big one at WrestleMania. However, things finally got back on track for the game as he won the WWE Championship in a Fatal 4-Way match at Backlash. This caused his feud to be reignited with Randy Orton. 
The two fought in two pay-per-view matches, with the King of Kings having his hand raised both times. From there, Triple H have title defenses against opponents like the Great Khali, Vladimir Kozlov, and Jeff Hardy. In the end, the game lost the WWE Championship to Edge at Survivor Series. Like many times in the past, Triple H's time without the gold was temporary. He won the WWE Championship back in an Elimination Chamber match at No Way Out in 2009. At the same time, Randy Orton had won the Royal Rumble and was going after the McMahon family. The Viper attacked Shane McMahon and, shockingly, Triple H's wife, Stephanie. Of course, this enraged the game, and Orton challenged Triple H at WrestleMania 25. At the event, Triple H ended his losing streak and retained the WWE title. But the good times didn't last long, as Randy Orton got his revenge at Backlash in a six-man tag team match that awarded the Viper the WWE title. Soon after, Triple H got back with Shawn Michaels and reformed DX once again. Their main rivalry was with Cody Rhodes and Ted DiBiase, the Legacy. The teams battled three separate times, with Legacy winning one match and DX winning two. At the end of 2009, The Game and HBK challenged Chris Jericho and Big Show for the Unified World Tag Team Championship. DX won, but unfortunately, their title reign was short-lived, as they lost the belts in February 2010. Soon after, Triple H entered the Elimination Chamber for a third year in a row. He didn't win this time, but did eliminate the WWE Champion, Sheamus. The Celtic Warrior was upset and attacked the Cerebral Assassin afterward. The two decided to face off WrestleMania 26, where Triple H was supreme. Sheamus wasn't done yet though, and a rematch was set up for the next pay-per-view, Extreme Rules. This time, the Celtic Warrior got the better of the game and defeated him. After this loss, Triple H would be absent from WWE. The reason for this was to focus on becoming involved in the behind the scenes of the company. It wasn't until early 2011 that we'd see Triple H again. The game returned and wanted to avenge Shawn Michaels, who was forced to retire after losing to The Undertaker at last year's WrestleMania. The dead man accepted Triple H's challenge, but Trips wasn't able to defeat the Phenom. After being absent for a few months, the game returned as the COO of WWE. He told Vince McMahon that McMahon was relieved of his duties and re-signed CM Punk, whose contract had recently expired. Despite this, Triple H and Punk kept butting heads. It finally resulted in a match between them at Night of Champions that Triple H won. The celebration was short-lived, as the WWE roster had a vote of no confidence in Triple H, and the game had his authority taken away. In 2012, the Camp King's focus returned to The Undertaker. Triple H won one more shot at the Dead Man, and the two faced off in a Hell in a Cell match at WrestleMania 28. Even with Shawn Michaels as the guest referee, the former DX mates couldn't get the job done. Not long after that, Triple H would begin his next storyline with Brock Lesnar. The rivalry started when Lesnar broke the game's arm after Triple H refused to give in to Lesnar's contract demands. Once he was healed, the Camp Canes and the Beast fought it out for the first time at SummerSlam. Brock Lesnar would win that encounter, but Triple H wasn't done. Trips and Lesnar had a rematch at WrestleMania 29 that saw the game as the winner. The rivalry ended with one final match at Extreme Rules, where Brock walked away victorious. A few months later, Triple H would begin a new faction called The Authority. It started when Triple H was the special guest referee for a match between Daniel Bryan and the WWE Champion, John Cena. Bryan won, but his victory was cut short when Triple H attacked him. This allowed Randy Orton to cash in his Money in the Bank contract and become the new WWE Champion. In addition to the Cerebral Assassin and the Viper, the group also included Stephanie McMahon and Kane. The Authority tried to hold Daniel Bryan down, but Bryan proved to be too resilient and defeated Triple H at WrestleMania 30 and captured the Heavyweight Championship later in the night. The Camp Canes had one more plan in mind to stop Bryan by reforming Evolution, but this quickly set off a feud with The Shield. H, Batista, and Orton weren't able to get the job done and lost to The Shield at Extreme Rules and Payback. However, as Triple H said, there's always a plan B. The game had secretly persuaded Rollins to join the Authority and betray Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns. Triple H continued to lead his faction while also being a mentor to Rollins. However, there was a thorn in the game's side, Sting. The icon made his long-awaited debut in WWE and caused trouble for the Authority. This ultimately led to Triple H and Sting going one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania 31. The game proved why he is that good and defeated the Stainer in the icon's first WWE match. 
For the rest of 2015, Triple H continued to appear regularly, but was mainly focused on helping Seth Rollins, who is now WWE Champion. Due to an unfortunate real-life injury, Seth had to vacate the WWE title. Roman Reigns ended up becoming the new champion, which angered the game. At the 2016 Royal Rumble, the 30-man match was turned into a title offense for Reigns. The Cerebral Assassin came out as a surprise final entrant and was able to eliminate Roman. This meant Triple H was the WWE Champion again, and this was also his 14th world title reign. The game and the Big Dog Clash at WrestleMania 32, where Triple H lost the WWE title back to Reigns. Following the defeat, Triple H would be absent for several months. He returned in August 2016 during a match for the Universal Championship. In a shocking twist, Triple H betrayed Seth Rollins and helped Kevin Owens win the title. This began a slow building rivalry, which resulted in Rollins and Triple H fighting at WrestleMania 33. The Cerebral Assassin locked up with his former protege, but couldn't beat Rollins, and Triple H took the L again at WrestleMania. For the next couple of years, Triple H would continue to appear sporadically. He mainly would show up for big matches, like teaming up with Stephanie McMahon against Ronda Rousey and Kurt Angle at WrestleMania 34, fighting John Cena at the Greatest Royal Rumble, or reuniting with Shawn Michaels to take on Undertaker and Kane. The game's last big rivalry was with his old friend and rival, Batista. Now a major movie star, the animal is dead set on facing Triple H again. Batista made a statement by attacking Ric Flair before the Nature Boy's birthday celebration. The game had no choice but to accept the challenge, resulting in a match at WrestleMania 35. The match was nearly 25 minutes long and featured some brutal moments. Thanks to help from Ric Flair, Triple H was able to defeat Batista and end the night with his hand held high. Ironically, not long after defeating one former Evolution teammate, Triple H would wrestle another, Randy Orton. It was announced that the two would clash at Super Showdown in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. It wasn't clear at the time, but this would be the game's last match in WWE. Randy Orton was the first to enter. His entrance was pretty tame in comparison to Triple H's. The Cerebral Assassin rode a custom motorcycle down the entrance ramp, which was practically complete opposite of how his original character in 1995 would enter, once they sized each other up. The fight began with the two locking up and exchanging wrist locks. It was a very methodical start until H connected with a shoulder tackle. Both men went for their finishing moves early on, only to escape the holds. Shortly after that, Orton connected with his first offensive move by knocking the game down with a right hand. Orton took over offense and worked away at Triple H in the corner. The King of Canes quickly turned things around by sending the Viper crashing into the ring post. Triple H continued to attack Randy and the fight spilled to the outside of the ring. The Cerebral Assassin began using the ring and surrounding environment to inflict the most damage. The Apex Predator used Triple H's own strategy against him by whipping the game into the steel steps. The match got back inside the ring where Orton stomped away at Triple H's defenseless body. Triple H managed to fight out of an extended headlock but was hit with a clothesline and sent right back down to the mat. Orton put on another side headlock but H broke free and the two began exchanging punches knee facebreaker. He then attempted another pedigree, but the Viper countered with a catapult into the corner. Triple H stopped Orton's momentum with a high knee and again went for a pedigree. Randy Orton prevented it and got Triple H on the ring apron, where he hit the- As Randy struggled to get back up, he was taunted by Triple H doing the crotch chop, which backfired as the Viper landed a power slam. Triple H crawled back to the edge of the ring, which turned out to be a bad move as the Viper caught him with a DDT. In full control, and Orton was about to hit the RKO. The Viper then attempted the RKO a second time and hit it. The Apex Predator went for the cover, but Triple H kicked out and hit the pedigree. However, Randy Orton kicked out of the Cerebral Assassin's finisher. An exhausted Viper rolled to the outside, with Triple H following. Orton tried to hit another back body drop on the announcer's table, only for H to reverse the move and hit Orton with four back body drops in a row. The King of Canes played to the crowd and looked to be in full control. When he got back inside the squared circle, he charged at his former from out of nowhere, allowing Orton to finally get the pin. For a final opponent, it's hard to have a better choice for Triple H than Randy Orton. Of the entire WWE roster, the Viper was the wrestler who had the most history with the game, dating back to over 15 years earlier with the formation of Evolution. The two battled in many big matches and defeated each other for world titles. One last round featuring the two, it's also kind of interesting that Triple H's first WWE match ended with a cutter and so did his last. 
While Triple H has made appearances on TV since this match, it seems unlikely we'll see him wrestle again. He underwent serious heart surgery in September 2021. During Triple H's recovery, his role backstage was greatly reduced, so it's hard to imagine him being in good enough health to compete. Never say never, but it seems like Randy Orton will end up being the final opponent for Triple H. Someone else who has hung up the boots is The Undertaker. Watch his first and last matches by hitting the video on screen.